G'day, welcome to our kitchen. Today we're going to make a pavlova, an Australian dessert. It was made for a Russian ballerina many moons ago in Sydney at the Opera House. It was made by the Opera House pastry chef for a Russian ballerina called pavlova. Um, I don't believe it's an easy dessert to make. Many grandmothers will tell you it's very easy and they've all got a secret recipe. But we are, we are at 8,000 feet in Colorado, in Avon, and um, I've been playing around with it for a long time. The kids have probably eaten about 20 pavlovas in the last three weeks. And, uh, <laughs> and then, um, so I've played with the recipe. I think we've got it down pat. It's so easy, the kids can do it. And uh, Danny's gonna help us today. So we've preheated our oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And when we put it in there, we need to lower it at 240 and cook it for an hour, then turn it off and let it cool overnight without opening the door. Um, really important, you need to make sure you've got a really clean mixing bowl, no water, no oil. You need to make sure it's clean really well, dry really well, and your whisk is really clean. So we'll go ahead and we'll put that on. We'll put that on our machine. Part of this recipe that we've changed is to add a half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. A xanthan gum is a natural product and it's used as a substitute for in gluten-free recipes as a binder. Um, so if you want to know more about xanthan gum, you'll be able to Google that. So we're going to start with seven egg whites. Daniel, put those in our bowl. And a pinch of salt. Just a pinch of salt. Oh, you can tip it in. It's a pinch. There you go. Now we're going to turn the machine on and whisk it till there's white peaks on about three quarter speed. So we've whisked, we've whisked our egg whites to soft peaks. Now we're going to add a cup and a half of fine white sugar until, and we'll mix that until it's um, shiny and glossy on high speed. So we've been whisking this for around two to three minutes and it's thick and shiny, glossy. Now key is if you take a little bit with your finger and you rub your fingers together, you won't feel the grains of the sugar anymore. So it's done. You don't have to be worried about knocking the air out like you would with egg whites. Now what we're going to add, and Daniel will fold, is we're adding a tablespoon, Danny. Yeah. We're doing a tablespoon of cornstarch. And a half a teaspoon of our xanthan gum. And then we need to still add our vinegar and our vanilla essence. We have one tablespoon of, um, sorry, one teaspoon of vanilla essence and one teaspoon of white vinegar. And then Daniel will just fold that in gently. While Daniel's folding that, we've taken a 20 centimeter, an eight inch cake tin, and we've drawn and traced with a graphite pencil around the outside of the tin. And that's gonna be our template for our pavlova. 
So what we've done is just remove that thing and turn it upside down and you're still able to see the template of the circle underneath the paper. And we're going to put our Pavlova mix just on the edge of that uh, circle and we'll mold it with a nice edge and top it off before we put it in the oven. And we just need to fold this in until the vanilla has it's still there, slightly brown. So once the vanilla is folded in properly, then we know we're done. Then we take it and we put it on our template. And what you want to do is make sure you mold it on here so it, it goes on as one mass and you don't get any air holes in there, no air bubbles. And with the pavlova, what it's going to do is it will bake for an hour in the oven and it'll create this nice meringue crust on the outside but then on the inside you're going to end up with a really light airy marshmallow texture inside the pavlova but it's gonna cool in the oven overnight so you need to leave it in the oven after it's cooked for an hour. Don't open the door and just let it finish cooling as the oven cools down. So I'm just flattening the top and don't want to push it out more than the 20 centimeter on that stencil that we drew. And it's okay to be as creative as you want with this. I like to do some kind of straight walls on it. You can leave the peaks on the top, etc. It will expand and smooth out a little bit can I do a peak? while it's cooking. A peak. Yeah. You practice a couple of peaks. Yeah. How do you do? Hmm? do, you do? So there's our pavlova. We've, like I said, preheated our oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we're going to turn it down to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to put the pavlova in the oven, bake it for one hour. When the timer goes off, we just shut off the oven, leave the door closed, and we'll leave it there till tomorrow morning. And we'll enjoy it tomorrow for lunch. And don't open the oven. Yeah, don't open the oven door. Ever. And we're just putting it on a bake without a fan. Welcome back. Our pavlova that we put in the oven last night, it finished cooking, it's cooled down, and I've transferred it from our piece of paper that it was baked on just to a 12 inch cake tin um, from a 12 inch cake ring. We whipped some cream, and what we're gonna to do to finish it is to decorate it with some strawberries, pineapple, kiwi, raspberries, and blueberries. And when we're done, we'll show you what that looks like. We'll slice a piece and we'll finish it with our passion fruit sauce. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you just want to put enough whipped cream on it to layer the pavlova. So it um, is enough to decorate it, to stick the fruit on there so they don't move around. But not so much cream that that's all you're going to taste. I like to just put the cream on the top and leave the crispy edge of the pavlova on the side so people can see it. Some people like to cover the whole thing like a cake, the sides, top, everywhere. And Danny's going to slice the strawberries in half. What we're going to do is put some strawberries around the outside edge, we're going to ring a pineapple, raspberries, blueberries and kiwi fruit. This recipe that we did is designed for high altitude with that little bit of xanthan gum in it to help as a stabilizer. 
It works really well. Just a great summer dessert with the berries and the citrus sauce. Some people like to put a lemon butter on it. We're going with the passion fruit because the acidity from the passion fruit, it uh, cuts into the sugar. Just real nice. We like to finish ours with a little passion fruit sauce. Like I said, that, that acidity, it really cuts beautifully through the, the sweet dessert. Mm -hmm. But that center, it's to die for. And it's just like marshmallow. Do you want to try? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it good? It's a great Aussie dessert, old classic. Enjoy.